Hello friends, I am Sunil sir and I am back with a new video. Friends, in this video we are going to discuss about exchange of gases as most of you have requested for this video. Exchange of gases is strictly concerned with human respiration chapter. Now whenever we talk about exchange of gases, we need to understand that there are two gases which are going to play an important role. One is oxygen and another one is carbon dioxide. Let's see how oxygen travels. It enters in our lungs, from lungs it goes in the blood and from blood it goes to the tissues and the cells. And the carbon dioxide from the cell will travel into the blood making it deoxygenated and then it will be entering in the lungs and through nose it is eliminated out. So it appears to be very simple process but it is not simple as such. What you need to do observe the video very carefully till the end so that you understand how the exchange of gases takes place at the alveoli level, at the deoxygenated blood level, at the oxygenated blood level and at the tissue level. Now in tissue level we are going to focus on the deoxygenated tissues only. Alveoli is the unit of breathing we can say for exchange of gases. Let's look at the inhalation and exhalation, the amount of air that we inhale. Oxygen 21%, nitrogen 78%, carbon dioxide is 0.03% and water is 0.01%. When we exhale out, do we exhale all oxygen? Definitely no, we use. So we exhale 17% of oxygen, nitrogen is exhaled as it is 78%. Carbon dioxide percentage will increase, it will become 3% and water vapor percentage will also increase, it will become 1%. So this is the inhalation and exhalation percentage. There are certain words that I will be using always. One is PO2. PO2 stands for partial pressure of oxygen. Means the pressure of oxygen on other gases. PCO2 is partial pressure of carbon dioxide. So whenever I say PO2 and PCO2 in the entire video, you have to understand that I am talking about partial pressure of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Let me draw one alveoli because here in alveoli the entire story begins. We inhale oxygen rich air. So that air will contain some amount of oxygen as well as some amount of carbon dioxide. So the partial pressure of oxygen that we have inhaled will be definitely higher than the partial pressure of oxygen present in the blood because diffusion has to take place. So the partial pressure of oxygen that is there in the alveoli is 104 mmHg and the partial pressure of carbon dioxide that we have inhaled is low, it's 40 mmHg. Remember, Whenever I say low carbon dioxide concentration, it is 40 mmHg and high carbon dioxide will always be maximum of 45 mmHg, not more than that or less than this. Let's take on one side, we draw the deoxygenated blood vessel that is the pulmonary artery. Another side I take it as oxygenated. So in the deoxygenated blood, it means oxygen is less but some amount of oxygen will be there. More will be carbon dioxide. So the partial pressure of oxygen that is present in the deoxygenated blood will be 40 mmHg. And the partial pressure of carbon dioxide that is present in deoxygenated blood is 45 mmHg. Now since the concentration of oxygen is more in the alveoli so it will diffuse from the alveoli into the blood and the concentration of carbon dioxide is more in the deoxygenated blood so it will diffuse in the alveoli from the blood it takes place purely by diffusion movement from high concentration to low concentration so the oxygen from the alveoli will enter into the deoxygenated blood making it oxygenated and the carbon dioxide from the deoxygenated blood will travel into the alveoli. Now what is going to happen next? Because the partial pressure of oxygen and carbon dioxide will now change. In the oxygenated blood, the partial pressure of oxygen will be very much high. So what we need to understand in the very primary step, 
that partial pressure of oxygen is 104 mmHg in the alveoli and it is 40 mmHg in the deoxygenated blood. So, oxygen from alveoli enters into the blood making it oxygenated. The partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the deoxygenated blood is 45 mmHg and in alveoli is 40 mmHg. Therefore, the carbon dioxide from the deoxygenated blood will travel into the alveoli. Now, since the blood is oxygenated, in the oxygenated blood, the partial pressure of oxygen will be 95 mmHg. It has increased and the partial pressure of carbon dioxide will be 40 mmHg. It has decreased. Now, this partial pressure of oxygen and carbon dioxide will travel into the different parts of the body. To be very much specific, this is the pulmonary vein which is carrying this partial pressure of oxygen and carbon dioxide and through pulmonary vein it will enter into the heart. From the heart, the oxygenated blood will be pumped to all parts of the body and it will travel into the cell or even I can call it as tissue. For that, we need to understand one cell. You can assume it as cell or even as a tissue. In cell, there will be high carbon dioxide concentration and low oxygen concentration. So, the partial pressure of oxygen that is present in the cell will be definitely less than the oxygenated blood partial pressure oxygen. So, the partial pressure of oxygenated blood of oxygen is 95 mmHg and of carbon dioxide it is 40 mmHg. So, what will happen? The carbon dioxide from the cell or the tissue will go into the oxygenated blood making it deoxygenated and from the oxygenated blood oxygen will enter into the cell. It means what? I can say that there is exchange of gases taking place at the cellular level. What will be the percentage or you can say partial pressure of carbon dioxide? It is 45 mmHg in the tissue and the partial pressure of oxygen is 40 mmHg. As a result, from oxygenated blood, oxygen enters in the tissue or the cell and the carbon dioxide leaves the tissue or the cell. Again, there is exchange of gases taking place. And now, since there is more carbon dioxide in the blood, it becomes deoxygenated blood. This deoxygenated blood will have partial pressure of oxygen as 40 mmHg and partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 45 mmHg. Now, these two gases making the blood deoxygenated will travel to the alveoli and when it goes in the alveoli, what will happen? The oxygen from the alveoli will again come back into the blood because the oxygen is 104 mmHg in alveoli and making the blood again oxygenated. So, this is how the entire cycle goes on with respect to exchange of gases. How to remember the value? Maximum value of carbon dioxide that can be present in our body is always 45 mmHg. The minimum value of carbon dioxide that is present will be 40 mmHg. So, wherever we talk about oxygenated blood means less carbon dioxide, put it 40 mmHg. When I say deoxygenated blood, high carbon dioxide value, put it as 45 mmHg. So, for carbon dioxide, the value is clear. So, lowest partial pressure of carbon dioxide will be 40 mmHg. The highest partial pressure of carbon dioxide will be 45 mmHg. Let's take it in this way. I will be discussing about the partial pressure of the gases that is oxygen and carbon dioxide with respect to alveoli, deoxygenated blood, oxygenated blood and even the tissue deoxygenated blood. In alveoli, the oxygen, the partial pressure of oxygen is very high, 104 mmHg. In alveoli, the carbon dioxide partial pressure will be low. So, low is 40 mmHg. Now, in deoxygenated blood, the partial pressure of the carbon dioxide will be high. So, highest value is 45 mmHg and the partial pressure of oxygen will be low, that is 40 mmHg. The in oxygenated blood, the carbon dioxide will be very low. How much? 40 mmHg, that is minimum value. Oxygen level will be very high. So, it is 95 mmHg. And in case of tissues where there is deoxygenated blood, the carbon dioxide level will be high. So, how much it is? 
फोर्टी फाइव एम एम एच जी एंड दी वैल्यू ऑफ ऑक्सीजन विल बी फोर्टी एम एम एच जी सो दिस इज हाउ यू कैन रिमेंबर दी वैल्यूज ऑफ डिफरेंट गैसेस एंड देयर पार्शल प्रेशर लेट्स रिवाइज इट इन अ क्विक रिकैप सो आई ड्रॉ दिस एलवीओ लाई वन साइड विल बी कमिंग दी ऑक्सीजनेटेड ब्लड एंड अदर साइड इज डी ऑक्सीजनेटेड ब्लड दिस इज द टिश्यू लेवल so i will be joining all these layers so that it becomes very simple for you to understand so on the left side let us take it as deoxygenated blood and on the right side we will take it as oxygenated blood in the alveoli the partial pressure of oxygen is very high 104 mm hg carbon dioxide is low 40 mm hg now when i talk about deoxygenated blood the partial pressure of the carbon dioxide will be very high and the partial pressure of oxygen will be low so in deoxygenated blood the partial pressure of the carbon dioxide is 45 mm hg and the partial pressure of oxygen is 40 mm hg as a result what will happen oxygen from the alveoli will diffuse in the blood and the carbon dioxide from the blood will diffuse in the alveoli now this blood becomes oxygenated blood since the blood has become oxygenated the partial pressure of oxygen in the blood will now rise it will become 95 mm hg and the partial pressure of carbon dioxide will decrease so it will become 40 mm hg remember highest value of pco2 is 45 mm hg and the lowest value is 40 mm hg this oxygenated blood will now travel into the tissues where they have lots of deoxygenated condition so here in the tissue the po2 value will be very less 40 mm hg and the pco2 value is 45 mm hg so there is exchange of gases taking place in the tissue level now the oxygen from the blood will enter into the tissue the carbon dioxide from the tissue will enter into the blood making it again deoxygenated and that deoxygenated blood having the partial pressure of oxygen as 40 mm hg and partial pressure of carbon dioxide as 45 mm hg will travel in the alveoli so remember students exchange of gases takes place at two places one in the alveoli and second in the tissues hope students you would have understood how the exchange of gases takes place if you are new to the channel don't forget to subscribe and if you have understood the video don't forget to give a like thank you very much